Yeah, we're you've in. Got, you've got two minutes. Two minutes from now. <laughs> Paul, how proud are you of your award tonight? Delighted to be recognised for what you do. But obviously this particular event, the Blacklist, it's one that's very close to my heart. It's, it's a wonderful celebration of all the great work that goes on from the grassroots and the community right the way to the top of the tree. So I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon. And how significant are the Blacklist? Do they grow from year to year? Yeah, it's incremental. I, I think it's important to you know, we are a minority, sort of statistically, numerically. But it's a situation, and I think it's a wonderful celebration of all the great work that people's done at all levels of the game. And uh, because ultimately the, the game is diverse, it's very inclusive. So it's wonderful for this to be inclusive. And obviously that's given the, the numbers tonight, the outcomes, and the very positive vibes. And you provided an inspiration through your playing career. Who were your idols when you were growing up? I'm not sure if I provided inspiration, but I mean, many of my idols have been what I've seen tonight. Players like Brian Steen in particular, Luther Blissett. Ricky Hill, they were great people, great individuals, great talent, great people that sort of rode excellence in, in, in the midst of adversity. And really, they were, I call them the godfathers of football. And can the work that goes on at community and grassroots level ever be truly measured and evaluated? Of course it can, because I think at the end of the day, you're going to look at the top level. 25% of the players of the game are black. Now, what we need now, there's underrepresentation in the boardrooms, in the administrative sector, in the coaching, in the management, you know, uh, and then grassroots. But there's a movement, it's growing, you know, the great, the game is going, they're recognised. The quality of opportunities is a very important thing, regardless of race, colour, creed, religion, gender, disability, and sexuality. You know, equality of opportunity is a fundamental human right, it's no privilege. So we're kind of growing and we're moving, and uh, I think there's been some fantastic work to date, but there's more to come. Can you say a few words about Keith Alexander, please? Oh, Keith. You've got 20 minutes? You've probably <laughs> run out of film. But Keith, Keith is an inspirational guy. He was really, when we talk about the catalyst to effect change, the revival, Keith, when we talk about measurement, the word you just used, it's exemplified no better than a man called Keith Alexander in the face of extreme adversity, in terms of extreme negativity, extreme what I call insular attitudes at that juncture within football. He rose above that. What he showed was it was about excellence. Excellence, not positive uh, discrimination. Excellence, engagement, relationships. That's what he done, you know, and uh, we use the word great lightly in this country or around the world. He was only not a great man, but left behind a great legacy and made a great contribution. And how important is black and ethnic representation in our World Cup? Oh, fundamentally intrinsic. I saw on the 2018 ball, inclusion, diversity is at the heart of our bid. You know, we've got over 300 different tongues in this country, you know, and it's important to bid we're in a multicultural, multiracial society, and our bid reflects that. We've got the inclusion of inclusivity advisory group, which I chair, done some fantastic work and it was summed up for me a month ago in Blatter, I've upset Blatter the FIFA uh, president come over and he was talking about the anti-discrimination work and the movement of work that Kick It Out has done in this country and it was wonderfully oh, fundamental. Yeah. Do you think I'm the most holistic group, the most well-rounded it's not for me to say, I just think what we've done, we know our assets, I've spoken about today, you know about our stadia, our infrastructure, our diversity, we're an excellent commercial partner, and our legacy. The most important thing is that we keep a very calm, steady, measured bid, do our best, so it's like playing a match. You know the opposition, you know the magnitude of the opposition, it's important that each of your team, we all give 100%, that way we can look in the mirror and sleep and, and, and obviously resonate with ourselves at night. Yeah. Well, it's all incremental, you know, listen, this one is a tough, serious, ruthless business. You know, there have been some great role models, and hopefully these guys, you know, they've served the game fantastically well, wonderfully well. I mean, listen, look what football was like in the 70s and the 80s. Look what we are, we are now in, in 2010. It's a level of, if you said to me the progress that's been made at all levels of the game, from the grassroots and the community to the top of the level, hold a laugh in your face. It's been steady, it's been incremental, there's bigger challenges ahead, but there are challenges that we can move on, and I really feel that we can challenge um, how important is it to get more black faces and ethnic faces in the boardroom? I, I think it's important because in the, you know, there's nothing better than a, a diverse workforce. I was talking about it last night in an event of delight. And I'm saying you know, there's wonderful complementary skills out there with women, with the disabled, you know, with white, with black. Hey, we are in a very diverse, eclectic, you know, multicultural, multiracial society. It's not about tokenism, it's about the best person doing the best job possible. But they have to be welcomed, they have to be engaged, and I think, you know, collectively, 
people, they're respecting that, they're engaging with that, and I just think this, this is a great foundation for real sustained positive change moving forward. Thank you very much for your time. Good.